I mean, was 20 degrees. And, of course, not enough was 24 degrees. I went 25 plus, so I won. It is Tuesday, April the 2nd, right here at Galaxy. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's not April the 1st. But it could be in some parts of the world, maybe even where today's featured artist is. And, of course, we're talking about Kurt Diver. So looking forward to this. So uh, I tell you what, let me do this. Yeah, we want to, we better turn the mic back on. Uh, We want to welcome everybody live on uh, Facebook Live. Nice to have you guys on board. It really, really is. And today I'm very, very excited. I think he's out of Cincinnati right now in Ohio. (coughs) Do you know if you say Ohio in Japanese, it's good. Yeah, it is. I heard uh, Kozimas is good morning. In Japanese, there you go. Uh, Konnichiwa to everybody in Japanese as well. Uh, in Japan, today we're joined by Kurt Daimer, and believe me, I'm very, very excited about this. So uh, welcome along to everybody that's joining us on Facebook Live right now. Let me just bring up the screen here. And uh, want to welcome everybody that's watching for the first time. If you haven't watched before, why not do this? Why not sub, thumb, bell? Uh, bell notifications when you... Uh, when we have important people, much like Kurt Daimer is, and he's a huge star here at Galaxy. You get so many requests, it's ridiculous, it really is. Uh, sub, why not subscribe? Become part of the family. Uh, we call it the noise here at Galaxy, simply because you have a voice. We hear about it every day. We get your phone calls, your texts, your emails, the whole multimedia. We get the lot and we listen, we take it on board, literally, and that's how we structure a lot of our shows. Uh, you know what to do with the summy thing, don't you? Mm. Yep, get epileptic. So, having said that, why not get into it? Uh, you're right here at Galaxy. Let's kick it off with Kurt Dimer and Doom. So that gives us a couple of minutes. <laughs> we can get to know each other. Very cool. I see now. I see the boss is watching. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, William Hughes, hello. William, nice to have you back. William O'Dell Hughes. Dale Cole, nice to have you back as well. I think we're going to be catching up over the next couple of days. Is it me? Yeah, we are. It's going to be on Thursday. Looking forward to catching up with you, my friend. Are you still with Community Service? Just wondering. Um, Michael Zidanowitz, hello, Mike. Of course, coming out of Galaxy Class Entertainments in Florida. Nice to have you on board. What do you got there? Uh, Dale Hammond's on board too. Nice to have you on board, Dale. I see this here as well. Will he be sober? Hello, Brody. How are you? Yeah, and meet uh, <coughs> Kurt. Yeah, meet Kurt Dimer. Uh, now, I'm going to give you the skitty on this. Uh, Kurt comes out of Cincinnati in Ohio. He says he's a native there. Um, <clears throat> and believe me, he's been doing a huge amount of acting in his career. Of course, uh, you might be familiar with things like Michael Myers with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Now, I'm going to ask him about that. Uh, it, it, and, and I really am going to ask you about that. Uh, but in the meantime, we are talking music today. So we will get a lot of music in, in this conversation as well. Maybe a little bit of humour as well, because you know me. Unpredictable. And as a stand-up comedian once said, let it be done. Well, I was that particular stand-up comedian too, by the way. <laughs> I'm quoting myself. We're playing Doom right now, and believe me, uh, a lot of people have been requesting Doom, and uh, I can recommend that you go and check it out if you haven't already with Kurt Diamond. Check out Doom, check out Hero, check out Dance. Absolutely brilliant dance. Only time will tell, and we're going to end it with Have a Cigar, and of course, uh, uh, I think it's brave to take on Pink Floyd. I really do, and I've worked with them here in New Zealand too, by the way. Uh, so, tell you what, let's welcome Kurt along to Galaxy.
That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and today uh, we're heading all the way over to Cincinnati to catch up with a uh, young man that I've been a fan of, well, for a couple of years now, and I've got to be honest with you, Kurt Diamond's joining us. Welcome to Galaxy, Kurt. Thank you, thank you so much for having me, Grant. I appreciate it very, very much. Huh? Well, you know, uh, I, I was in awe of your music way back in the day when you bought out Cigar, and uh, I've been a big fan of yours ever since, and well... We kicked it off with Doom. Now, believe me, absolutely love, love, love Doom. And we always seem to want something to grab people's attention uh, to start these shows with. So I think, you know, it would be remiss of me if I didn't say, you better tell me about this track. Yeah, Do Doom I wrote for a movie that I that's going to be coming out here in the next year or two called Hellbilly Hollow um, that I star in. And... We needed a track for the final scene of the, of the movie. A lot of, our, of my music's in the movie itself as well. But we want, I wrote Doom when I was still drinking beer one night out here in my studio. And uh, I was just sitting out here by myself. And I thought, you know, in horror movies, there's a lot of doom and gloom, obviously. That's the obvious. And But also in life, there's a lot of doom. And a lot of the doom for people... And dread is caused by drug addiction. And, you know, I battled my own problem when I was young with that evil white stuff, you know. And uh, I know what it felt like to feel like you were doomed all the time. So what I wanted to do was talk, and now it's so prevalent in the world, you know, where people are dying from fentanyl and all this kind of stuff. It's just crazy. And I wanted to bring attention to that while writing a song for a horror movie, kind of a double message if you will so make it appropriate for the movie for horror but then also i always like to share my thoughts on how to help other people uh subtly in my lyrics so that's that's how doom came about absolutely love that i really really do and uh, uh congratulations for getting sober really <clears throat> hey, I, I left all the hard drugs behind at 20 years old thankfully so <laughs> yeah well i mean I had a youthful devil as well, so believe me, I know what it's like, uh, and I know how fast people can get addicted to it, I really do. Uh, loving, yeah. loving the football behind you. Do you the what? Uh, I'm loving the football behind you. Yeah, that's our tour bus uh, football we take with us on tour, and one of the guys in the band that left it up is his, like my office. Above, I have a green screen out here, I have a studio down below, I have a the Kurt Dimer bar down below, and then up here is kind of my office. And all the walls you see in here are whiteboards, so I can write all over the walls and map stuff out and ideas, and it's kind of my workspace, so it's quieter up here. So why it? that's why the football's in here. Our tour bus is parked here as well right now. We, uh, we, we base out of here when we head out on tour. Okay. Are you having an earthquake right now? No, not having an earthquake, but uh, let me turn this in. My uh, air conditioner came on. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Does it look like, is it shaking? Yeah. yeah, it is, and believe me, we're in a place that does have multiple earthquakes. In fact, we had one uh, not so long ago. We had about a swarm of 5,000 just last year, so believe me, that's what our place looked like at the time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, really? I just turned it It should go off here in a second. Yeah, um, not only earthquakes, but we have volcanoes and stuff like that as well. Yeah, well, I, I've never been to New Zealand, but I'd love to come down there and play. I want to get to Australia and play. One of my favorite bands from the 80s is from Australia, who really helped me mold my sound the way I like to do it and just stay true to my voice as the Hoodoo Gurus. Oh, so. right. Yeah, believe me. Uh, I actually met the Hoodoo Gurus before they became famous. They were actually curtain raisers for another Australian band 
had four initials to the name, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me turn let me turn this off. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. My eyes were going like this for a while there, thinking, <laughs> <laughs> what the heck's going on? Uh, you know, I met the Huda Gurus many, many years ago when they used to tour with a band called ACDC as a curtain yeah. racer. So uh, believe me, I knew them then. Uh, Sonny Morgan is watching. Nice to have Sonny. And uh, looking forward to meeting up with you in the near future as well, Sonny. Uh, now, I want to talk to you, Kurt, about... Uh, you mentioned the movies, and of course, uh, Doom is in the movie, forthcoming too, by the way. But you've been in the movies uh, with rather interesting people. I want to talk to you about Jamie Lee Curtis. What was she like? Well, the, my scene, uh, which is about halfway through, it's at the gas station on the teller. Um, she wasn't a part of that scene, so I didn't get to work with her. I got to work with uh, the other actors that were, you know, just in that scene that day. So I really didn't know how that was going to turn out. And plus, it was early on in my acting career, and I was very fortunate, uh, you know, to get that. But when we went to the premiere out in L.A., she was very humble. She had a family with her. Uh, we had a party across the street at the Roosevelt, Roosevelt or Roosevelt Hotel out by the pool. Um, it was just very cool. I, I'm actually very good friends now with James Jude Courtney, who plays Michael Myers, because we spent the whole day in that gas station just talking about our animals and all this other stuff. Why I had this prosthetic on my face. It took like two hours to do that in the makeup chair. Christopher Nelson did a remarkable job. He also did the mask. Um, so that's who I hung out with that day was uh, Michael Myers, and then he killed me. So <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis, so very humble, very uh, very uh, kind to everybody around here when I met her at the premiere. Very, very cool. Now, I want to talk to you about Hero, uh, because, believe me, I absolutely love this track, and you're getting quite a few uh, requests for it at the moment. You've got about 1,279 requests uh, so far for this particular track. So I think we better find out all about Hero. Tell me your version. Well, Hero, uh, I wrote, wanted to write a song because I'm a big uh, common sense person, if you will. And, you know, we need, when the pandemic hit, we needed people to still be able to go to work so we could get what we needed to live as a society. So we call it, I, you know, refer to them and everybody does as the frontline workers. And then I don't know why anybody discounts like emergency personnel or police or firefighters and all the people that save lives all over the world, not just in our country, but in every country. Um, without them, we couldn't go to have concerts together. We, uh, we lose more lives, if you will, and uh, there'd be no law and no order in the world. Um, so I wanted to honor them. And then I wanted to also honor veterans and an act of military because they, whatever country you're in, they protect your country and give you the freedoms or whatever your country stands for. And especially here in the United States, um, with the, you know, where they claim the land of the free and the home of the brave, without that, without our soldiers and our veterans, we couldn't have and do what we do. We take that for granted. So I wanted to write a song honoring all of that. And then, also remind people that every day you wake up, you can go out into society, and let's just say you're driving down the highway and somebody gets hit on their motorcycle, you could get out of that car, help that person, and maybe save a life and be a hero as well. Or you get good service at a restaurant, um, and the waitress is just trying to take care of her child and may be single. You don't know their story, but if they do a great job, give them a big tip. Be a hero and every day and look for the opportunity to be a hero. So that's that's why I wrote it. And uh, I sent my original lyrics to uh, Phil X, who I wrote the song with. And uh, Phil X came up with that groove and just totally made it into uh, a kick-ass song. So that's how that all came about. Absolutely love it. You're right, Eric Galaxy. Join today. Coming out of Cincinnati, too, by the way, is Kurt Diamond. <laughs> How are you feeling, Kurt? You okay? Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> Feel good, man. Thank you so much again for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure, sir. It really, really is. And uh, how many countries are we in? 
169 countries are tuned in right now. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, we do okay. We do okay. Uh, but believe me, we could always do better, and I'm going to talk to you about that after we do this, because I would love to be able to promote you in other media that we're connected with as well. That's okay. Yeah. That would be amazing, yes. Nice, nice. I'd uh, uh, love to come play at your festival. Oh, believe me, we want you in not only one festival, we want to talk to you about maybe a number of festivals. Okay. That would be, I, I've been trying to, to uh, get the right people behind me that can get me into festivals, because I know once I play in front of people, I get so many new fans, and mm -hmm. it's just a matter of playing, you mm -hmm. know, in front of people. And uh, the bigger the crowd, the better. So. Well, we had the very first original founding member of ACDC and the very first singer of ACDC, Dave Evans. Uh, we had him in India just recently in November, and uh, uh -huh. they ate him up, <laughs> literally, you know what I mean? So, yeah. believe me, I think we could talk some turkey very, very shortly with the right people over that way, and believe me, this place is just opening up right now for us, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, Thank you. The people we work with over there, they do festivals, they do concerts and stuff like that. And uh, I'm sure when we introduce you to those people that they will see it the same way we see it. And we would love to be able to get you over there on our stage. That would be amazing. That would be, a, be my honor. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, <clears throat> gosh, it's hot in here. Have we got the Kiwi air conditioning working? No. Okay, can you can you install the Kiwi air conditioning, no, please? Yeah. It's called open a damn window. <laughs> <laughs> that's our that's our air conditioning over here. Uh, coming up next is the dance, and, and I love 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 this track, my friend. I really really do. And uh, <clears throat> I've got uh, a little bit of something something I'm going to ask you. It's a little off the cuff, and I'll ask it to you after we do this one because uh, okay <clears throat> as i said i like to throw a little bit of humor in there every now and again uh, very cool just while we're alone and not with everybody else in the world <laughs> That's right, you're right, Eric Galaxy 107 FM, and today we're talking to Kurt Dimer, coming out of Cincinnati, and uh, haven't been to Cincinnati for a while, actually, so it's so nice to be able to have somebody out of the city coming and joining us here in New Zealand right now. Uh, we were just doing Hero, and, uh, well, I know that you're a significant actor, uh, but at the same time, you were back in the... Uh, college days, I think, if I remember right, uh, was your first rock band. Now, what got you into music in the first place? Well, I was influenced. I started going on to comp when I, I lived in Houston. But my dad got moved all the time, but I lived, ended up in Houston from um, fifth grade until halfway through high school. So probably around 12, 13, I was allowed to go with one of my cousins, you know, that was older, to start taking me to shows. So my first concert ever was Jackson Brown with David Lindley. Then I went and saw Charlie Daniels, and I just kept going. Then I saw ECDC. I saw Ozzy with Randy Rhodes. I saw Black Sabbath. You name it, I saw them all. Iron Maiden before Bruce, all that stuff. So, but back then I had anxiety and I couldn't, I couldn't have done, got gone on stage and done that in front of a bunch of people. I was still figuring out who I was and what, what was going on in my brain. But I said, if I could ever do that one day and do it right, and it, when the timing hits, then I'll get back into it and do it. But when I was young, I, pl I played locally when I was in college at University of Cincinnati, you know, and just did some local cover band stuff. and. Then I got married, had three three boys. I was married for 22 years as I grew up and got my degrees and just figured out life, started my own companies. And then 
I got uh, uh, went down to shoot a cameo in Trading Paint with John Travolta and Shania Twain, and they gave me a speaking part in the movie on the spot. And then I ended up being in this scene with John Travolta and Toby Sebastian and all these big actors. And that told me that was time, my sign, to go back to my creative side that I left behind and let's start doing movies, which I never thought I'd do. I would never went to acting school or anything. And then the music kind of followed a year later when I uh, was shoot, shooting some stuff down in Birmingham, Alabama. And I met a gentleman by the name of Ben Trexel who had three songs. I said, well, I have a unique voice. Let me put them on your songs. And... You know, to keep, keep a long story short, the rest is history. Since then, I just kept going, and here we are today. So, Well, i got to be honest with you, Kit. Uh, arguably, you've got one of the deepest voices in the music industry. We do know of a number uh, that we play here, including um, <clears throat> uh, a number of cowboy, well, a number of country and western singers, especially one that sings about moonshine. You may know who I'm talking about. Uh, but we love the style of music that you put your voice to. Literally, now, I've got to be honest with you, when I was growing up, um, my dad stuffed it up for me, literally. He says, hey, Grant, sing like Elvis. And yeah. every, everything from then on in was sing like Elvis, you know what I mean? And, and right. I just really got to the point of, nah, that's enough. My mother took me to my first concert, which happened to be of all things, Gary Glitter. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, nice taking a young boy to a um, Gary Glitter concert, right? Anyway, yeah. I I recognised straight away that I'd never be that kind of person, that singer. I couldn't be. Right. Otherwise, I'm going to come out looking like Gary Glitter, Gary Glitter with <laughs> an Elvis kind of deal going on, which is stupid in its own oh, right. God. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I got involved in radio and I got involved in being an engineer working not only in the studios but working as front of house as well <clears throat> and that I've been lucky through my career because I've met some of the biggest names in the world literally yeah. and uh, just sometimes it's being the right person at the right time when the promoters need somebody other times it's been pre-planned and we've gone ahead and done it which is yeah. absolutely cool and I've travelled around the world, it's taken me around the world, whereas I knew that I can't sing. In fact, to be honest with you, I, well, I, I, I sing tenor, or maybe 12 miles away from anybody that can damn well hear me. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not that cruel to people, I'm not. Uh, but as an engineer and as a DJ, I recognise damn good music. I've had the, uh, the experiences of working with some of the best in the world, as I say, so... It's not often that I have a band come along that I absolutely love. And I've got to be honest, you and your music is right up there with us. Now, we're very, very proud in saying that we only play the best indie bands in the world. And to get an interview with us, almost impossible, to be honest with you. Almost. Yeah. Uh, it's an honor, and I, I very much appreciate it, and I love that you love the music, because with you loving it as much as you do, and I can tell you're very passionate about it, like I am, that more and more people are going to hear it now all over the world, which is why I do it. So. And, well, I, I've got to let you know that you'll be, you're getting a following here at Galaxy, literally. Um, I'm not going through a breakfast show these days without seeing your name in the stats there. This, this is how we... Uh, uh, construct our breakfast shows and a lot of our shows literally is I get to work about 10, 10.30 at night got to go through reception to get to my office and the receptionist leaves me three USBs uh, one is stats on how we did today, bar graphs and all that sort of stuff, the other one is yeah. emails and legal documents that I've got to take care of basically and the third one is statistics on requests from our audience which is basically named the noise uh, and I take that into production production, and I we break it down about 1.30 in the morning so it's ready to go at 6 o'clock in the morning for the breakfast show right? And awesome. I'm seeing your name there more and more and more and more the dance is in there uh, only time will tell is in there but have a cigar is always in there 
And this is fantastic. You know what I mean? Every morning I see have a cigar. And I love, I've got to be honest, I love the track. I have worked with Pink Floyd. We did it in Western Springs. And uh, absolutely thought this was very brave of you. So when we get to that track, I want to know why you did it to start off with, if you know yeah. what I mean. But I really want to talk to you about the dance. Uh, and, and first question, believe me, is coming from Shona, who's coming out of Palermo, Italy. She's asking, Kurt, can you actually dance? Can you dance? Oh, I've got, I've got moves. I can. I, I don't know if, if it's uh, the way Kurt Diamond dances, the way I talk, and sing, the way I sing. I mean, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I can dance in my own way. But uh, <laughs> dance, dance itself, you know, to be even more specific, is uh, I got crammed on a on a Southwest flight because I missed my other flight. And I got stuck against the wall on the, the, the like ten rows back, and I'm like, I, I'm just going to write the best song, take my time on this three four hour flight because this is going to be miserable if I don't. And you know, life can treat us miserably, and it has its ups and downs. And I ended up writing dance about you know a bad moment I was having, but life will be good once this flight's over. And you just got to dance your way through life, through the good and the bad, and keep going. And that's exactly why I wrote that that song. And uh, I just I love it. I love playing it live. I think it should be played on radio all over the world. I don't know why it's not being played on Octane, but I don't really think I have anybody pushing pushing me to that kind of stuff yet. But uh, I love the song Dance, and I think it could change lives, you know, and just teach you how to dance through the, the good and the bad. Absolutely brilliant, and believe me, Kurt, I've been described as a, a bowl of spaghetti across a vinyl floor. That's how I dance, so believe me, <laughs> it's a good description, actually. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> she agrees, too, by the way. Uh, so right here at Galaxy, we're joined today, coming out of Cincinnati, is Kurt Dimer and Dance. Enjoy. What's up, everybody? So how are you feeling? You okay? I'm good, man. Nice, nice. Um, <clears throat> you're not a vegetarian by any chance, are you? Or no. Are, you're not a vegan? No. No, you're, you're, you're a meataholist like me? A what? A meataholist like me? Cannibal. Yeah, cannibal. Yeah. Yeah. I just, the only thing I really don't care for to eat is fish. Okay. Yep. I eat, but I eat everything. I'll, I'll try everything else. Okay, well, for a couple of years now, I've been trying to find whether this is a myth or the truth. Uh, have you ever tried uh, vegan sausage? Vegan sausage, no. Yeah, no. Um, I'm just trying to figure out whether they're made of real vegans or not. <laughs> real vegan. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was upset when I found out that Girl Guide Biscuits didn't have Girl Guides in them. Um, <clears throat> true story. Uh, are you familiar with the product of Johnson & Johnson, the baby oil product? Yeah. I was doing an interview with one of the executives, one of the high-ranking EVPs, executive vice presidents of the company, and I just happened to say to him, you know, how many babies goes in a bottle? <laughs> Right. Uh, instant, instant, instant end of interview. He just, they won't return my calls, my emails, nothing anymore. I've been blacklisted. Oh my God. That's uh, taking things a little too personally, in my opinion. Yeah, well, yeah. hey, you know, it's only a bit of a joke how many babies goes in a bottle of baby oil. I mean, it is baby yeah. oil, it's written on it, you know. How do they extract? Yeah. Do they squish them out? What are they doing? Yeah, they do. It does say baby oil, mm. so right. Are you familiar with Captain Kirk, you know, J James T. Kirk, you know, talking about William Shatner? Yeah, yeah you, you remember him? Yeah. I, I see in the news this morning in Canada, he's been ordered to recall his lingerie line. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently, wow. Shat well, apparently Shatner Panties isn't a good name. Shatner what? Shatner Panties. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> you can use that. You can. I'll, I'll let you. <laughs> Literally. 
Okay, we've got about a minute to go. We're coming up to uh, only time will tell. And I'm not going to apologise for the jokes. <laughs> oh, I love, I love jokes. I just saw uh, with my boys the other night Shane Gillis up in Boston. He was hilarious. Okay, cool. I used to be a stand-up comedian and I'm just working on some stuff right now, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> you ready to, are you going to get ready to tour again? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That's right, you're right, here at Galaxy 107 FM. Let me just turn that down a little bit. And today I'm joined by Kurt Dimer. Uh, do I have that right? It is Dimer, isn't it? Yeah, Dimer, yeah. Very cool. I, yeah. I thought yeah, I'd yeah. get that right. Yeah. Uh, I see Ted Vladimir is joining us as well. Uh, hey, you, Ted. Or should I say, hello? Yeah, <laughs> we did an interview with Ted just the other day. It was a very, very interesting interview. Love, 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 Ted. And JJ as well. So uh, keep up the good work. Looking for new stuff soon. Really am. Uh, today we're joined by Kurt Dimer. And he's coming out of Cincinnati. It's been a while since we've been to Cincinnati. And uh, absolutely love his work. I've been a big fan for a wee while now. Not only for his acting, but moreover for his music. Being a DJ myself, I appreciate music more than I do acting. Literally, and believe me, I've been in a couple of movies myself. Uh, are you familiar with Hercules? Mm-hmm. Yeah, are you familiar with the uh, TV series, the Her- uh, Hercules? Or maybe Z- uh, maybe Xena? No, I don't know if I saw that. Okay, but uh, believe me, a uh, big, big series here in New Zealand was Xena, uh, Princess Warrior, and also uh, Hercules uh, was really working in both of those ones. Uh, but more notably... <clears throat> Uh, back in the day, uh, I used to uh, work with a guy these days that is rather well known. Uh, he's made a few movies now. I went to university with this guy. Uh, are you familiar with Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I actually went to uh, university with uh, this knobs who produced uh, and did that movie, well, series of movies. That's very cool. Yeah, those are magnificent movies. Yeah, it's on the rich list now here in New Zealand. Uh, believe me, back in the day, we were students at university. We couldn't afford absolutely anything. And uh, we always found out one thing about that man. <laughs> uh, when it came to his turn to buy the beer, you could never find him. You could never find It's true. It really is. Uh, if you ever want to go and have a look at some of his earlier stuff when we were at university... Uh, I suggest maybe going have a look at a movie called Wasted, or maybe, Wasted. or maybe Meet the Feebles. If you're familiar with the Muppets, well, this was yeah. a a bawdy version, you know, student kind of deal uh, version of Meet the Mupp- uh, Meet the Feebles, the Muppets. Believe me, you'll en- you'll enjoy it, but you uh, may need to um, <clears throat> get in a different kind of mindset to be able to watch it because uh, believe me it's one of those kind of movies you know what students are like if you know what I mean yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you man <laughs> yeah you might need a few beers or something at least <clears throat> anyway yeah, I, drink, I, I drink the vodka with water plain water vodka and ice oh, okay that's what I okay the beer, the, the beer was killing me the beer, I, I mean, I, I would drink 10, 15 beers a night, and I'd wonder why I was getting big and bloated. And as soon as I quit drinking the beer, I'm back down to my weight from when I was 20, so. Ah, that, that was the reference of why you used to drink beer earlier on. Uh, I, I tell you what, talking of Lord of the Rings, uh, one of the guys that uh, usually watches this, literally, he's managing a band coming out of the Netherlands right now, out of Norway, actually, uh, but he wrote the score for Lord of the Rings, and uh, believe me, I'll have to introduce you to him, you'll love him, you really will, 
and you never know, you might get you over there to do some shows that would, over that way. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. We're still trying to find our path over over to Europe and all over the world, so we're just waiting for the right opportunities. Well, you never know what might transpire, and especially with some of the people that are watching here, Dale Hammond, for instance, one of the Hammond brothers, uh, very famous, Hall of Famers too, by the way. Nice to have you on board, Dale. Say hi to Gail for me. Uh, of course, Ted Vladimus, uh, Michael Zdanowitz, he's with a... Um, <clears throat> A uh, promotional company coming out of Orlando, Florida. It's called uh, Galaxy Class Entertainments. If you uh, ever need any promotion or anything like that, I can recommend that Michael does it. Believe me, he's a good guy. He really is. And takes care of his artists. And he's got a number that we promote here at Galaxy. So he's got his fingers in the pies. Uh, but believe me, I'm going to talk to you about a number of other projects that we got coming up very, very shortly as well. So uh, we'll see how awesome. things go there. May I say, literally, only time will tell, <laughs> which is quite appropriate. Now, I, I think you better tell me all about this. About only time will tell? Yeah. It was another, I wrote it around the same time I wrote Doom, and I was just sitting there again, drinking some beers at about 1, 2 in the morning, and when I write, I do it in my notepad on my phone, and then I'll do voice memo stuff to myself with ideas, and... I was just like, okay, we're, am I going to go to heaven? Am I going to go to hell? Um, only time will tell when I die. Um, it, pretty much everything in life is um, only time will tell how that outcome is going to come about. So I just thought it was a uh, very uh, good message for people just to think that, you know, let's just uh, live life every day and uh, enjoy it and because no matter what's going to happen to you, you can question it, but you're not going to know until only time will tell. <laughs> and it's kept it that simple. It's a simple message that I think people can relate to, sing along with. And on my double album that's coming out, my debut double um, vinyl, we have a you have a version of it out on uh, Work Hard, Rock Hard, which is streaming everywhere, where I'm talking more. But now I have a new version coming out. We play it live where I'm actually singing the verses, and it's really, really cool. Absolutely love it. You're right here at Galaxy. Here is Kurt Dimer. Only time will tell. <clears throat> Do you believe in bad luck? Um, or luck at all? Well, I mean... Yeah, I believe a lot of stuff is luck, and yeah, I believe in bad luck. I've had some bad luck, and I've seen other people have a lot of bad luck. You, you have both good luck and bad luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, sort of like fate. You see, um, I've had three near-death experiences in my life, right? <clears throat> and I'm just trying to figure out, was it just bad luck or not? Uh, my father used to be an explosives expert for the coal mines, down the South Island of New Zealand, I grew up with a guy who blew stuff up for a living. So, uh, yeah, you can figure out what kind of life that was, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Um, but I also had a motorcycle accident, spent, you know, almost two years in traction. <laughs> literally, I, I spent a bit of time on the machine, almost clinically dead. In fact, Jeez. they told me I did pass away. And then the third time I got hit by lightning. Of all things, you know, playing golf just down the road, literally, beautiful sunny day, I go to take a swing with my club, bang, I'm under a tree going, what the hell happened? Okay, well, so believe me, three, uh, the very first one, I got blown up by my father. <laughs> I'm not kidding, uh, literally, um, this thing went off, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, went flying across the coal mine, broke ribs, oh knocked me out, everything like that. Uh, apparently, I did die on the operating table. They brought me back. And my, the first thing I saw, and I'm not kidding, was my dad standing there going, did you see a white light? <laughs> really? And I went, no, yeah. no. And he says, oh, you got some work to do then. <laughs> you, got, you got some work to do. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe Your dad really blew you up. Yeah, he did. He did. Jesus. 
Yeah, I've had, I've had a few near death. I almost got run over by a car on my bike when I was little, and it stopped just in time. I almost drowned in a pool when I was little. My mom saved me. I flipped a car on a highway when I was 18, like rolled it twice, lived through that. Yeah, you got it. I've lived through the little drug addiction where I thought I was dying. You know, you just got to. You just gotta not take life for granted and just keep going and when people knock you down you get right back up and you keep going and you keep going. Yeah, but I can't help taking life for granted, it's my name. It's my yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Chris Andreas is joining us coming out of Vancouver. Nice to have you on board, Brother Man. It really, really is. Say hi to Jimmy and to Louie for me. Please. You know, love Louie on the guitar, really, really do. Um it's nice to have everybody on board this morning. There's a lot of people around the world watching this morning. Welcome. It really, really is. Um, That's how many, awesome. How many cities are tuned in? cities around the world are tuned in right now. That's amazing. That's awesome. Hello to everybody around the world. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, they're getting it. They are getting it. That's right, you're right, here at Galaxy 107. I love that bit at the end of it. The end of it? Yeah, where you go, only time will tell. Only time will tell. Yeah. Only time will tell. Yeah. I love that. I love that. My, produ my producer, when I first <laughs> got back into music, I obviously I hadn't, uh, wasn't singing for like 30 years, so... When I got back into it, it was like starting from scratch again, and Chris Lord Algae brought me in under his wing. And uh, during the, when the pandemic started, and he said, I have a story to tell, and I have a unique voice, but I had to do a lot of talking at the beginning because I hadn't trained my, my vocal cords or my voice and gotten it to where I am today. And uh, so that's why you got a lot of that dialogue on some of the early stuff. But when the album comes out, you'll hear a whole new, like where I've come. I've literally learned how to become uh, an artist and, um, you know, train my voice and everything. I've been pretty fortunate with Chris Lord Algae at Mix LA out in LA, which is where I cut all my vocals. So it's been amazing, an amazing ride. You know, I feel so strong now, now that I've got my voice the way it needs to be. And uh, But that's why you get a lot of talking from back at the beginning as I was getting started. I get it. I understand now, literally. Now, uh, I've got to ask you at the same time, uh, have you got a name for your new album? Yeah, it's called, uh, um, and so it begins, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and, yep. and the artwork I think you'll really love because it's, uh, I, uh, I did a photo session with Ross Half, and do you know Ross, the photographer? I've heard of him. I haven't met him myself. Yeah. So Ross, uh, my manager's Brian Wheat, right, uh, the bass player from Tesla, mm -hmm. and uh, he's good friends with Ross, so we just did a photo shoot in last December, so got one of his photos, and then I've got this great art being done, because it's going to be a double album, it's going to have like 16, 18, somewhere in there, and it's a double album, because I love double albums from back in the day when I was growing up listening to rock and roll, and I have a lot to show people, and I want everybody to get my lyrics, and I might put some sayings in there, whatever, but the art itself depicts, I'm kind of in the dark world, but I'm always looking for the light, and I think you'll see that theme when you see, it. it's pretty epic, so I can't wait for that to come out in like May or June. Now, weren't you just touring with Queen's Rock? With who? And weren't you just touring with Queen's Rock? Uh, my first tour, I went out with Jeff Tate. Right. Okay. Yeah, Jeff Jeff is uh, was a get, get you know um, featured on Burn Together, which is that video that's out on YouTube, and that's also on Work Hard Rock Hard. So my first tour was with Jeff Tate um, back in twenty one September of twenty one. So we've only been touring a couple years now at, at the 
most. So I've got to keep, you know, pinching myself and reminding me it's really not been that long. We didn't have, we didn't start out and, you know, having to grind it out. Or we were noticed pretty quickly. So I'm pretty fortunate. I went out with Jeff Tate. I've been out with Ingve. I've been out with uh, Drowning Pool. Um, I've been out with Buck Cherry and Skid Row. Um, I've done a lot of Tesla dates, and I've got more of those coming up. We've got a lot of dates coming up. We've got some festivals now coming up. And I can just feel the momentum and with being on your show and uh, what you're doing for me, which I didn't even know was happening, is unbelievable. And it gives me even more hope that around the world people are hearing my music and we'll get over there when the time is right as well. So, Well, well let me tell you, Kurt, not only are they hearing you, you're a huge superstar here at Galaxy. You really, really are. As I say to you, I don't get through a breakfast show in the mornings, and believe me, it's the biggest rated show of our, our whole company, if you know what I mean. It's the breakfast show. Literally, I don't get through one without having your name there every morning. If it isn't for Have a Cigar, and believe me, Have a Cigar is your most requested track. It's Hero, it's Dance, uh, it's Doom, it's Only Time Will Tell. They're all in there, literally. But you don't just only appear on The Breakfast Show. We also have you on a Monday night with Galaxy Artists. We have you on a Saturday afternoon in the uh, Modern Rock Show. We have you on a uh, Saturday evening with The Metal Show as well. There's some stuff in there that just fits perfectly. Uh, So we spread you around a bit, you know what I mean? Thank you so much. Um, uh, and I am going to ask you if you would do me a favour. How would you like to do me a voice drop saying, Hi, this is Kurt Dimer, and you can hear me on Galaxy or something like that, and we'd love to be able to promote you by playing that on our radio as well, you know, just putting it in there all oh, the time. I'd love it. Whatever you want me to do, it, let's do it. Awesome. Uh, tomorrow's good. Receiving it tomorrow would be even better. You know what I mean? Get it out there. The more times people hear your name, the more times they go and find out who you are. But before you know it, you've got maybe a couple of thousand more fans around the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, uh, even as soon as yesterday, you know, what, what can I say real simple to people that just, you know, how some people you just put something real simple out and you just say, like, who is Kurt Dimer or something? And I just go, who's Kurt Dimer? And then people would see that and they'll want to go look it up. It's, you can do simple things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be honored to do a, a, a call out for Galaxy, a, a shout out. And Love that. Um, MP3, too, please. <laughs> and send it to Barbara uh, because uh, she's the boss. And literally, uh, as I was saying, it's almost impossible to get an interview with us here. Barbara gets about 200 submissions a day from artists around the world. And we can only do so much. Within a week, you know what I mean? And within a month. So uh, Barbara's got to be very, very selective. I think that's the best word with her red pen on who gets played, who gets uh, the interviews, everything like that. And believe me, I've got to congratulate you because, uh, as I said, I found Have a Cigar a little while ago, quite some time ago. I've got to be honest, I think it was fresh out within hours uh, because we have equipment here that let us know when music comes out straight away and we yeah. get onto it pretty much straight away it's what we have to do to be able to keep up with the rolling play and I remember I was listening to Have a Cigar uh, my first question is and I've worked with uh, uh, Dave Gilmore and uh, Pink Floyd here in New Zealand and my biggest challenge I've got to be honest was I've never worked a quadraphonic system before but I've, you know as an engineer you get to learn very quickly on the job I got to know why did you choose Have a Cigar? Well, you remember Ben, who I told you about from Birmingham, the, my first writing partner. It, this was back in uh, end of nineteen, going into or end of beginning of nineteen, all of nineteen. We wrote a lot of these songs together that I took to LA with me, and 
Dad wanted me to do a cover. Heck, it was his idea to do Have a Cigar. And I'm like, well, I don't know, it's Pink Floyd. And, you know, you hear the original version. You don't, you, I, I just couldn't picture it as something I should do. But then when I was out in L.A. and Chris, the Lord Algae, took our demo and then he remixed it and decided, you know, we became good friends and he wanted to work with me and saw my potential as an artist. Because that Have a Cigar you and Ben did that, you don't want to sing. You know, Ben had just laid out how he wanted it to be played. He goes, let me show you how you're going to do this. And this will be my kind of his audition to me to take me under his wing. And uh, I didn't know at the time his hired session, uh, you know, guitarist was Phil X. He, he just said we got the CLA band. It was Brian Tishy on the drums and Phil X that did the bass and the guitars. And uh, I heard that guitar solo, which Phil, by the way, did in one take, and he wanted to redo it. And Chris goes, what are you going to redo in that guitar solo? It's one of the best ones I've ever heard. And uh, then I went in and put my voice to it. He goes, now you just be you. And that's the first time I realized my voice is different. It's unique. Uh, it's just like, you know, when you asked me earlier what influenced me to get back into it as well, it's like, when ACDC came out, Bon Scott, uh, there are other singers, they all had their own unique voice, and they did it their way. They weren't cookie cutter. Van Halen did it their work way. They weren't cookie cutter. So why can't Kurt Dimer come out now in 20, you know, 2020 and do it his way and not sound like everything else? So that's that's what influenced me. But Chris, so it was really Ben Ben's idea. Chris said, let me show you what I can do with it. I went in to mix L.A., cut the vocals. Phil X was on guitar, and then a month later we went and shot a music video during COVID for it, and the rest is history. So. <clears throat> you know, I love the video, too, by the way, talking of the video. And I love the guy right at the very start that says, come in and have a cigar. That, that guy's priceless, really. Um, did you actually know that guy? That guy. When I met Chris, the first place we went out to dinner out, and have you had been to L.A. out near uh, Tarzana? We were out there. There's a place called Monty's Steakhouse, and that guy actually is the owner of Monty's Steakhouse. And I would be going out there recording and working on my, you know, my first EP. And Chris and I would go eat there all the time after we were in the studio. And he'd always be out there and just he was a cigar smoker and just fit the role perfectly and he you know kicked, we gave him some cigars and he came and he loved being in the video and uh he was just perfect for it so that's how we met him though uh, and and we're still good. You, you're quite right he is very very perfect for the job absolutely and, yeah love that guy really really do uh so right here at galaxy 107 fm uh i was thinking about five and a half but i've just been told 5,722 requests since we've started playing it a number of years ago, so it's collated over the years, if you know what I mean. But it's still yes, still being requested every morning in my breakfast show since the day we started playing it. This is fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Keep requesting. The most requested Kurt Dimer song, Have a Cigar. Love that. Love that. Really good. Um, I've worked with both versions of Pink Floyd, I'm talking, of course, of Roger Waters, and the version with um, Dave Gilmore as well. And um, they both claim to be the best version of Pink Floyd, to be honest with you, but I still think Dave Gilmore's got it all over Roger Waters. <laughs> I really do. Um, but, of course, don't forget that Roger Waters was the uh, author of The Wall. Great album. The what? The Wall. Yeah. 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 Was. Um, For me, they've done some amazing work. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to wrap it up after this, Kurt, but please don't go anywhere. Um, you'll get a copy of everything we do today, and some of it I do apologise for, others I'm going to be very proud of, <laughs> to be very honest with you. Uh, but Barbara's going to put it into a movie, and you'll get a copy of the movie. Um, Amazing. Thank you. I'm going to say one thing to you. Show it to people you don't like. Do what? Show it to people you don't like. Yeah, okay. Show it to people, yeah. Well, it, well. It, it's a given that if you show it to people like friends and family, they're automatically going to love it because they love you, right? 
right, but right. if you show it to people you don't like, that usually puts yeah. a fire under their tuchus, and before you know it, they're getting in touch with us as well, saying, hey, I've got a band. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So yeah, yeah. It's a little well, on, well, on play. We'll, we'll share it everywhere, and uh, I look forward to putting it out there on our social media. Our social media is growing daily, so it's... Uh, Hopefully this will help it even more. Nice, know. nice. Are, are you familiar with the Galaxy Artist page on Facebook? The what? Are you familiar with the Galaxy Artist page on Facebook? No. It, it's a it's a free service. We've Get on there, promote yourself. Believe me, there is a huge amount Shauna, of people. But friend oh, they're going through Shauna. Okay, she them. does such a great job, Shauna yeah, O'Donnell. Love, I'll love, love, love Shauna. Friend him so we can do Friend him as well. Stuff. Put him in there. Uh, because believe me, it's a free service, my friend, and there's a lot of people go and have a look in there if you've got a new album out, if you've got a new track out, if you've got a new video. If you just want to say hello, get on there. The more times that people see and get to know you, they'll go and have a look at your work, and before you know it, you've got another few hundred thousand fans. You know what I mean? It's the, gal the Galaxy Artist page. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll invite yeah. him. Uh, Barbara will invite you onto it. She's the administrator. Be anyway, so. mm. That'll be good. And did you say you're following my Facebook page? Is, it, is that you friended me on Facebook? Because I don't think I do the friend thing. I think if you can just follow me. Okay, uh, not me, uh, but uh, me. I, I will need to um, friend you somehow. We'll talk Instagram about that after. Friend, if you're on yeah. Instagram, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, to be honest with you, um, <clears throat> we'll wrap this up very shortly, and uh, I'll give you the uh, numbers. This is the important one for how many people were tuned in on the internet. Uh, of course. We don't know that there are people, there could be about a dozen people to one device, you know what I mean? But right. Because right. exactly. we only click over the IP address connections, if you know what I mean. So, But I'll give you that number and you'll be impressed, you really will. Awesome. <clears throat> and uh, i really got to thank you for tuning up, my friend. Thank you very much for uh, coming to our interview. Well, I've got to thank you for having me and for believing in me and sharing my music with the world. I mean, it, it means very much to me. Right, have a cigar did it for me right from the start, right? You know, I've been a big fan ever since. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've got to turn the mic on again. There we go. Uh, that's right, you are here at Galaxy 107 FM. And today uh, we've been talking to Kurt Dimer coming out of Cincinnati. And of course, uh, absolutely, I'm a big fan of Kurt Dimer's work. Now, I've got just a very, very quick question, and that is anything new coming out in the near future? Are you about to release anything new? Yes, I, um, I've got my debut double album coming out. It'll be on vinyl. Open it up, tell the story. It'll be on CD. It'll be on cassette. Um, I will be touring with it. I will be, I'm going to be looking for partners around the world, you know, record uh, stores, people like that to put on the website where you can get my work. We'll be selling it on the website, KurtDimer.com. That's D-E-I-M-E-R.com. Um, so that's coming out here in the next two months. Uh, we've got some new merch designs coming out around the, our song Fight and uh, our, our uh, My Be Kind motto about spreading kindness in the world. And I've got some other cool ideas. And then I shot a movie um, last March called Scared to Death that should be coming to theaters here in the near future, uh, starring alongside Lynn Shea from Insidious and Something About Mary and all that, and Bill Mosley from The Devil's Rejects and the Rob Zombie movies. So... I uh, created a character in those called the Grog, which I got the Grog cup there. And I think you guys will be very uh, pleased to go see that movie at the theater and walk away going, what the hell? That was quite a, a different horror movie right there. It's kind of a comedy meets horror meets scary, you know, with some brilliant actors. So, well, I so know. That's, that's I, some of the new stuff coming out besides tour dates. You know, uh, 
Honestly, I think we've covered all of that in this interview as well. So, uh, and you've survived. We've got to the end of it. I got to really, really appreciate uh, everything you've done. Literally, uh, if if you uh, <clears throat> want to see me a t-shirt, I'd be honoured to wear it while I'm doing these interviews. Believe me, people do check out who I'm wearing. And then they get on the interwebby thing and start buying merch and stuff like that. And before you know it, you've got more fans. feel sorry for you. I really do. you another 5,000 fans. You're never going to know what the heck to do. <laughs> because people will be contacting yeah. you. <clears throat> wanting yeah, your yeah. The more the merrier. I, I just want people to be kind to each other. i got a positive message. I like to rock out the way I do. And it takes a village to, to conquer the world. So I appreciate everybody very much. Well, it takes a village to um, uh, to raise one child sometimes, you know what I mean? But, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> believe me, it took a village to raise me and then kick me out at the end of it, <laughs> which is quite true. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I got ousted yeah. from my town, literally. Uh, so, Rob, th- uh, so, sorry, <clears throat> Kurt, I was reading Rob down here. Right. Uh, anyway... Uh, Kurt, I've got to thank you very, very much for joining us. Please don't go anywhere just yet, uh, because we do have a couple of things I want to talk to you about. But in the meantime, please join us again. And uh, next, I I think it's uh, Thursday, we're doing more interviews. Let me just double check on that. Yes, we're meeting Dale Cole coming out of North Carolina. It's been a while since we've spoken to him. And uh, pending is Zoe coming out of Nashville. Now, Zoe was originally in... An Australian, moved to the UK, commuted to Nashville. Now she's living there, looking forward to catching up with Zoe in the near future as well. But in the meantime, we've got to pass on and get going. So have a very happy and successful day. I'll see you with Barbara in the morning for the breakfast show. Join us then between 5.30 and 10 o'clock in the morning, where you'll hear, I'm sure, Kurt Dimer and one of his tracks. You're right, here we go. It's a good morning.